Well, hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Zero 60. And on today's episode, I'm gonna try and get rid of the Tampa Dot. So if you've been following along, we've had this X5 for probably a bit over a month now. Um, had a few issues with the transmission, which we managed to fluke and fix. And I think the first week that it was actually out on the road, we developed some issues with the light control module. Um, yeah, basically the indicators weren't working on the inside of the car, but they're working on the outside. After a horrific amount of diagnosis, we ended up just swapping in an LCM Three module from a 535. That got the car sort of functioning, but we were getting some errors on the dashboard and it did bring up this tamper dot. Now I ended up doing a bit of research and it turns out the LCM3 isn't fully compatible with a vehicle that originally came with an LCM4. So I bought a second hand LCM4 online. That's what's in the vehicle now. And I'm gonna try and recode the mileage to get rid of the tamper dot. Basically what happens with these tamper dots, the mileage on the vehicle is stored in three different locations. The dash cluster, which they call the IKEA, the DME or the EWS part of the DME, and also the light control module. God knows why BMW thought it would be worth storing the mileage in the light control module, but they did. So if you change your light control module, you get a tamper dot because it's going, hey, the mileage doesn't add up. Now, after a little bit of research, I found some software called PASoft. I've never used it before. I've got it logged in here. Well, not logged in, but connected to the vehicle. And apparently this is actually gonna let me rewrite the mileage and the VIN number to the, uh, to the LCM light control module, and then that should get rid of the tamper dot. So let's give it a crack. This is the first time I've used the software. Let's see if we can work out how to do it. All right, so the only thing I've done off camera, which was a bit of a faff, was getting the drivers to install. And all it was, was I needed to get the driver signing turned off on Windows 10. Once I turn driver signing off, we seem to be okay. And I have connected this just before. Let's see if it reconnects. Please wait. And there we go. So that's read the IKE and the EWS. Now, as I mentioned, oh, let me just turn the music off. As I mentioned earlier, I'm pretty sure the mileage is stored in the IKE, the EWS, which is pretty much just the, the DME. And actually, interestingly there, it looks like the DME has stopped counting since we changed the light control module, because we've done about, mm, yeah, shit. Yeah, because you got driven to Queensland Raceway. We've done about that difference in mileage. What's scary is, we might need to line these up as well. Okay, all right, this might not go to plan, but we'll see how we can see where we go from here. So we have BMW scanner connected and we need to go select, I'm actually we can close this one. If I can see around the GoPro, close that. And then we'll go units and we'll go LCM because that's the one we want to work out. Okay, now the first thing we need to do is change algorithm. Now that's to make sure that the software is talking to the light control module with the correct algorithm, I guess. And apparently to do that, we do that based off of the hardware and the software version. Now this is the second hand one that come from the wrecker. I kept the case of it because the case was broken. So I put the new light control module into our old case. But this one is hardware seven and software version seven. So apparently if we go view support list, so we want to get one that's as close to us as we can. Oh, it's already done it. Hard, oh, yeah, so that one there. Oh, God, touch screens. Hardware 7, so HC19-10. It already identified it. Okay, cool. So we've identified that. We can close that. Okay, now we want to go programming. And we want to write odometer. So we want to write the correct mileage to the light control module. So that one is there. Oh, will it click it? Okay, so the new odometer, we want it to be 18306. You can see the light control module, the vehicle that it's come from had done 248,000 Ks. So, right, 18306, that is the current mileage on the car. I've got to really not mess this up. I don't want to live with a tamper dot forever. So we go. Okay, writing odometer. Odometer write, okay. Well, that was kind of easy, 180, 300. We still have a tamper dot, but there is another thing we need to do. We need to write the VIN number. So then that one, we go reprogramming, and then write FGSTNR, which is the VIN number. Now I've got to enter the last seven digits from this VIN. 
which smart me would have had ready. Give me two seconds. Okay, I have the VIN. It is LN75834. There we go, okay. Oh, okay. Sorry about the glare on the screen. That one's done as well. And I think that should be everything corrected. So now, if we turn the car off and turn it back on, it should do some thinking. And if we're lucky, we could be wrong. If we're lucky, the tamper dot will be gone. Tamper dot is still there, but it, it does like a rethink. <gasps> the dot is gone! Yes! We fixed something! <laughs> oh, it's, oh. Using coding tools for the first time is always a bit iffy. But yeah, tamper dot is gone. All right, awesome. What I might just do while we've got this software here is unit name. Yeah, I think we're all good. I think we're good. We'll exit this part. We'll go car, identify again, continue. So this should read everything. Yeah, that mileage is still off. A bit bizarre, but we don't have a tamper dot. I might check it in a day or two and see if the mileage between the IKE and the EWS lines up. Or if you guys know why the EWS stopped counting when we change a light control module, that'd be great. But I might just take a protest drive, make sure everything works fine. Interestingly, in this software, it is classed as an X5 Alpina 4.6. There you go. Alrighty. Let's take it for a quick test drive. So just getting back from the drive and yeah, no errors. Indicators are all working. I did quickly do a light check when I was out there, but hopefully you can see, turn the lights on, radio dims. It seems to be fixed. Um, one thing I will just do quickly, I will do another restart because we've still got different mileage between the EWS and the IKE. In fact, we'll probably just scan that again and just see if it's updated now that we've done a few Ks. Turn her off. Lock the car. Unlock. And turn it on again. Just see if that tamper dot pops up. When I actually watched the tamper dot come on the first time, there was probably three or four seconds between powering it on. It's registered there's an issue and then the tamper dot come on. But hey, no tamper dot. Let's just connect the software again quickly. And we'll see, oh God, laptop's falling apart. We'll see if, oh, this was way too ballsy trying to plug that in on camera. I think I got it. Okay, um, yeah, we'll just see if the EWS and the IKE has still got different mileage. Oh, it's so hard doing this one handed. Okay, right. Turn the aircon. Okay, car identify. Continue. Hardware is not ready. Okay. Turn everything off. Turn it on. Okay. Okay, it updated. The mileage has updated. So it's moved the EWS mileage up to match the IKE and the light control module. Yeah, if you know what the hell's going on and why it does that, let me know. I, someone, I remember reading somewhere that it will, it will update the, if, two, if the modules match, it will update the two highest module, sorry, it'll update the low module to the highest two, if that makes sense. So be, because the IKE and the light control module was higher than the EWS, it's automatically updated the EWS to the higher mileage. I guess it's just so you can't basically wind your car back accidentally, but you can wind it forwards, it would seem. I think we're good. We've got the correct mileage, everything's looking sweet. I'm gonna do a little bit more reading on uh, this PA soft or BMW scanner. I didn't know much about it. I just read that I could fix my light control module with it, but it looks like it does some cool stuff in regards to coding and options and doing things like this, because this is the only software that can actually program 
program VIN and mileage. Although I don't think, and I could be wrong, I don't think you can wind your car back. So if you're gonna be sneaky, I don't think you can actually wind your mileage back with this. But you can get modules to match up. All right, guys, I think that's probably gonna end it off. I think we're good. We are. Miracle. I'm going to have a review on that unit in the next week or two. It's been good. I may wait until I get the actual iBus app fully installed. Well, the dongle. Um, but pretty happy with it. The only thing I don't like about it is the it's supposed to have better ways of internet connectivity when it's not been much better, to be honest. It's still a bit dicky connecting it to an Apple. Wouldn't be an issue if I had an Android phone. Um, but anyway, all right, we'll end it off there. Thank you very much for watching. If you've got any questions about reprogramming your LCM module using PA soft, let me know. It was a fair bit of messing around to get the software to install in Windows 10. Again, if you're having struggles with that, let me know, but I'll put the pate, I'll put some notes in the description on how to get to work as well. But yeah, we're good. Fixed. Hope everyone's having a good Christmas. Peace.